Thank you for that um, very kind introduction. I hardly recognize myself. Um, wonderful to be here. Um, incredible event. Um, and hopefully, I can keep you engaged for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, as said, I'm the CEO and founder of Cinch. We're a mobile communications platform. Uh, and I will talk a little bit more about that. Um, but the first part of my presentation really is to talk about how an enormous amount of value has been redistributed from operators into the hands of applications, and at that, uh, social applications, not just uh, over-the-top communications apps. Um, so if we just talk about communications briefly, um, this is something that has been uh, a basic need since the dawning of man. Uh, but it's only around 30 years ago that it started actually transforming from the written and spoken word uh, to the first mobile handset, to the fax machine. And then five years ago, um, with the advent of smartphones, uh, we started moving into a world of something called asynchronous communication, which is where you've got voice, video, and text, and you're moving simultaneously between these, and you're doing it with maybe one person, or you're doing it with multiple people. Um, and I was actually sitting on a plane the other day with um, six people of similar age. I, I see myself as pretty young. Um, but we were the only four people on that plane that had actually written a handwritten letter apart from a Christmas card. So the day of the letter and the one-to-one -one phone call, I think, are gone. Um, in terms of revenues, um, if you look at sort of 10 years ago, the majority of revenues from operators were voice and messaging. We're talking about $650 billion worth of voice and messaging revenues. Those have started to collapse. Um, and instead, some in certain markets like the US, they've been compensated by data revenues, because obviously we're spending a lot more time in applications consuming data. In Europe, we're a little bit further apart, mainly because there's considerably more competition. Uh, there are about 250 operators in Europe, as opposed to four in the US, for a similar amount of um, subscribers. Um, and that's not particularly strange, because data has uh, exploded. Um, so 2008, you got the first iPhone. I remember uh, working in advertising at the time and talking about the year of the mobile. They'd been talking about the year of the mobile for the last 10 years. and 2008, it actually arrived. Between 2008 and today, we are now at a level where we're consuming two exabytes of data per month. I have no idea what an exabyte is, but it's apparently very big. So in six years, we've gone from zero to two. In the next three years, we will go to 11 exabytes of data. That is a 500% increase. Fantastic news for operators, but it's also fantastic news for the service layer, the application layer, which is fueling a considerable amount of that growth. I can see that the statistics have gone all haywire on that. Apologies for that. So why this big transfer of wealth, or why the redistribution of monies? We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars that have left um, the balance sheets and the, the market capitalizations of operators and gone into the hands of OTT and service and, 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 and different communications apps. The first one is very simple, and you, you'll, you'll all know this. Skype and WhatsApp have shown the world that you can do these things for free, Viber, Tango, and the rest of them. The second one is that with smartphones, suddenly this became extremely easy. You didn't need to have an ID. You could just log in with your telephone number and automatically be connected to message or, or call anybody you wanted as long as you had a good data connection. Another part of this is actually that it's been forced upon them. In the EU and to a certain degree in the US, regulators have said, you know what, you can't charge 15 to 16,000 uh, percent on a call or on a message, which is approximately what they were doing, uh, and have um, every year actually pushed down the tariff of what can be charged to a point that by 2017, it's going to be pretty much a loss leader for most operators. And the last one is um, for 15 years, operators were investing in the data network, but making all their money in SMS and voice. Now, we're at a point where the money needs to be made where the investment is. Most of data consumption is Netflix and YouTube and Hulu and Spotify. Um, and that's great for the operators, um, and it's also great for those services, because hopefully, 
uh, we will get better data networks across Europe and the US. That's meant to say voice and text have remained the same for decades. The last operator-driven innovation was interoperability. Apologies if there are any operators in the room. Uh, this is a, a slightly provocative uh, message. It's not mine. This guy, Chetan Sharma, he's a, a guru in all things mobile. Um, interoperability is the ability to call from Telia to Telenor or Vodafone to O2. Before, you didn't, couldn't do that. You had to call a switchboard. They changed it, and they moved across. Um, and yes, it is provocative, but to a certain degree, it's true as well. Um, operators could very easily have owned communications forever. Uh, they sat at the epicenter of it. They owned voice. They owned SMS. Um, but they chose, rather than innovating, they chose to milk it as the cash cow. Uh, and ultimately, that gave an opportunity for a lot of companies to come along and actually start taking that revenues away from them. And um, today, if you talk about innovation within the mobile ecosystem, it's very seldom within an operator light. You're often talking about the innovation layer being the service layer, the application layer. And if you think about how many applications have come up and how many new services have come up, that seems to be um, a reputation that's pretty well founded. Right. Um, so. Uh, billion, let's, let's talk about $100 billion, because I know it's going to be around $600 billion of value that's gone from SMS uh, and voice to the app layer. But let, let's just talk about $100 billion, because that's approximately what's happened in the last few years. Uh, why are these companies worth so much money? Um, it's a question that I've asked myself after running Rebtel, which was 25 million users, but we were making real revenues from terminating traffic. We had nothing like these valuations. We were being monetized as, a, as an operator, even if it was a, sort of a slightly more modern operator. But these companies, if you take away Facebook for a second, Kakao, Line, WeChat, Tango, Viber, Instagram, revenue-wise, they're probably not making more than a billion, a billion and a half in revenues, and yet they're worth hundreds of billions of dollars. And the reasons are these. The numbers that these companies are putting up every single month, you just heard from Truecaller, uh, they're sort of adding half a, a million people a day. To get to 350 or to 500 or to 700 million users in a matter of years is phenomenal growth. We haven't seen that before. So first of all, how quickly they've got to the number. The next one is how much potential growth there is going forward. It's not like the curve is stopping. The curve is continuing to go up. The next one is most applications you go into when you need them, a map. You go into a map when you are trying to find this place and you're around the corner. These applications get opened numerous times a day um, and are spent time in. You spend time in these applications. What does all this mean? Well, it means a massive opportunity in the future, but it also means enormous amounts of inventory. Um, and inventory means enormous amounts of opportunity for either distribution or for monetization through advertising. And hence, the bet is, as it was with Facebook before they started monetizing, that these companies, if they can come to half a billion users and still growing, then they will be able to monetize that service going forward. The amount of time spent in the applications makes that a greater reality. So let's talk about that addressable market. Anybody who's actually pitched for money uh, in the startup world, they sit down opposite an investor, and the investor quickly says, so tell me how big is your opportunity? What's the addressable market here? And first of all, we talked about the data side of things, how quickly that's growing, 500% increase in the next three years. That's one part. You have, and I think everybody's been talking about how many smartphones there are in the world. There's like one and a half billion at the moment. In five years, there's going to be eight billion smartphones, smartphones for $50. Then there's the connected devices, your, your uh, watch or your car. And the last one, which I think is actually really interesting, is that we talk about 3G and 4G, but 3G and 4G only cover around 15% of the world's population. Ericsson believe that when them and Huawei and, and these other companies have started rolling out the networks, that within three or four years, 85% of the world's population will have access to mobile data. So you have an enormous amount of smartphone growth, you have an enormous amount of data increase. You have a network that's being, pull, that's being built out. And then you have applications. Two million applications in the world today. That's a 50% increase since last year. 
Um, interestingly, um, uh, data consumption within communications actually grew by 200% last year. So it's actually going quicker than the rest of the market. But 50% increase in the number of applications in the App Store. Now, I know that probably 90% of those are never downloaded, but it's still an astronomical amount of apps and services that are new and coming to the market. If you take away games, the applications that are downloaded the most are pure communications apps. We've talked about this. Interestingly, the other ones, Tinder, LinkedIn, Twitter, Plenty of Fish, Badu, what are these services? OK, well, they're dating or they're 140 characters. They're all about communications. So how does that tie into Cinch, which is kind of the, the point of the exercise? Well, we believe um, that communications took the first step from the operators to OTTs, but that ultimately communications is best served in whatever service that you're in. We believe that every single application, every single service can become better if it is social. And our job is to create the code, the infrastructure, and the platform to deliver that. So what we do is we take all of the best services of the telecoms world, all of the best services of the OTT world, we take all that complication, we repackage it, and we make it available for developers at a fraction of the cost that it would actually cost for them to develop this themselves. We have 40 staff, the whole of the back-end team from Rebtel, so we're about 100 years of experience in building this platform, um, and we launched only a few months ago. By the end of this year, we hope to have 450 million applications enabled with our SDK. So what might that look like? And here's just a list of different services, but just to sort of give you an understanding. Let's say you're a dating site. Let's say you're Tinder. You could have um, every single Tinder user could initiate a call with anybody else that they had swiped right with, that they'd liked, and actually open up a video chat if they wanted to. Might be creepy, so you might delete the video chat. Just have a call. If you are a messaging service like Kick, maybe you don't want to spend years building a communications voice component. You'd come to us, use our SDK, and automatically all your users will be able to call each other or call a landline or a mobile phone. Um, if you were PayPal and you wanted merchant support, or iZettle that we heard from earlier, you wanted your merchants to be able to call support, but also transfer the information that was on their tablet straight through to the customer support agent, you could do that through Cinch. And essentially, every single site or application that you can see has an opportunity to become richer and more interesting. And we believe that if more people spend time in the application, if more people are engaged with it, then that will heighten the value of their app as well. To give you an example, um, what we do is actually pretty complex. As I said, we've probably got between 50 and 100 years worth of development into the platform. But this is the code that any app developer would actually need to integrate live mobile VoIP between their users. So any app that's got a user base, they add this code, and two users can start talking to each other over data. My Twitter handle is Andreas CB rather than Andreas C Ban. And my email address is Andreas at cinch.com. So if any of you want to reach out, you want to make your apps more social, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for your time today.